talking out loud so they never saw eye to eye she had her magazine dreams of far away scenes and he had the wild Thank uh you. -huh. 
not going anywhere. See, I, I'm right here. I'm not gone. I don't know why he won't just look at me. You know it's me. Who else do you think it is? Want some water or something? Oh, man. Come on, man. You know you can't just keep sitting like this, huh? You want me to go outside and get you something? Some, I don't know, potato chips? Or, I'm not going to leave. Don't worry. I am not going to leave. I already told you that. going to stay right here. We ain't going nowhere. But uh, why don't you let me put you back to bed, huh? Yeah, I didn't know you'd be sleeping when I got up here, so I just, I'll just i tuck you back in. i make some tea or something. You want some hot tea with lemon or... Ovaltine or... Now, hey, honey, you're gonna have to let me go and just eat... <sighs> Will you want me to leave? No. What do you want? You smell. <laughs> I smell. You do. Well, I have been driving for days to get here. Your fingers smell. Horses. Pussy. Oh, come on, mate. They smell like metal. Yeah, no, I'm not starting this shit, all right? Rich pussy, very clean. Yeah, sure. You know it's true. And I came all this way just to see if you were all right. I don't need you. Oh. Mm. Well, okay. Okay, fine. Don't go. Oh, I'm going. Don't go! What am I going to do, huh? What am I supposed to do? You know. What? You're gonna erase me. You're... What are you talking about? You're either gonna erase me or have me erased. Why would I want to do that? Are you kidding me? Because I'm in the way. Oh, don't be stupid. I am smarter than you are, and you know it. I can smell your thoughts before you even think of them. <laughs> I'm trying to take care of you, all right? No, you're not. You're just guilty. Gutless and guilty. Great. I'm gonna kill her, you know. Yep. Yep. Don't talk like that. I am. I'm gonna kill her. And then I'm gonna kill you. Oh, here we go. Systematically with sharp knives. Two separate knives, one for her, one for you, so the blood doesn't mix. Oh, see, now that's a nice touch. I, I like that one. I, I'm going to torture her first, though. Not you. I'm just going to let you have it. Thank you. Probably right in the midst of a kiss. Right when you think everything's been healed up. Right when you're sure you've got me buffaloed. That's when you'll die. You know how many miles I drove out of my way just to come and see you? You got any idea? Nobody asked you to come. 2,480. Yeah? Where were you? Kathmandu or something? 2,480 miles. So what? So, so I missed you. All right? I did. I missed you more than I ever missed anything or anybody in my whole life. The whole time I was on the road, I kept thinking about you. I kept seeing you. Sometimes it's a party. Which part? Your neck. My neck. <laughs> yeah. You missed my neck? Yeah. Yeah, hey, what? I missed all of you. Your neck kept coming up for some reason. I kept crying about your neck. Crying? Yeah. Yeah, we. They. Uncontrollable. We start up and stop. Start up all over again, mile after mile. I couldn't stop it. Cars passing by, people inside staring and pointing. Cause see, my my face was all screwed up. I I couldn't stop my face from being was twisted. Was this before or after your little fling with the countess? One night fling with any countess. You're a liar. Look, I took her out to dinner once, sir. Right? Ha! And twice. You are bumping her on a regular basis. Don't give me that shit. You can believe whatever you like. I'll believe the truth. It's less confusing. <laughs> I'm taking you back, mate. 
I'm not going back to that idiot trailer if that's what you think. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm moving it. See? I got us a sweet piece of land now up in uh, Wyoming. Wyoming? Yeah. Are you crazy? I'm not moving to Wyoming. What's up there, Marlboro men? Look at this place. Jesus. Yes, they're here. Why not? I got a job. I'm a regular citizen here now. You got a job? Yeah. Hmm. Would you think I was helpless? No, it's not that. It's just... It's been a while on something. Well, I'm a cook. <laughs> You're a cook? You can't, even, you can't even flip an egg, can you? Oh, I'm not talking to you anymore. Look, man, I've got this all worked out. I've been thinking about it for weeks. I am going to move the trailer, all right? I'm going to move it straight on up to that sweet piece of ground I bought in Wyoming. Wyoming. And I'll build a little pipe core out for the horses. We can plant a big vegetable garden and I uh, would get some chickens, maybe fresh eggs every I day. hate chickens! I hate horses! I hate all that shit! You know that! Guys, you got me confused with somebody else! You keep coming up with this lame country dream life of chickens and vegetables, and I can't stand any of it. Makes me want to puke to even think about it. Yeah, well. Get used to it. Uh, you're unbelievable, you know that? I'm not letting you go this time, Mac. You never had a hold of me to begin with. Right. How many times have you done this to me? Done what? Suckered me to some dumb little fantasy, then dropped me like a hot rock. How many times has that happened? It's no fantasy. It's all a fantasy. And I didn't drop you neither. No. You just disappeared. Yeah. Here now, ain't I? <laughs> well, praise Jesus God! I'm gonna take care of you this time, mate. I am. I am gonna stick right by you no matter what. Get out of here! I don't know what you had to go and run off for anyway. Run off? Run. Me? I don't know why you couldn't have just stayed put. You knew I was coming back to get you. What do you think it's like sitting in that stupid tin trailer for weeks on end with the wind ripping through it? Waiting around for the butane to arrive? Yeah. Hiking down to the laundromat in the rain? Do you think that's thrilling or something? But I bought you all those magazines, huh? What magazines? Yeah, I bought you a whole stack of those fancy fashion magazines right before I left. I thought you liked those, those, those French kind. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I especially like the one with the Countess on the cover. Yeah, that was real cute. Yeah. All right, all right. All right, what? Where are you going? Just gonna get my stuff out of the truck. I'll be right back. Uh, what, are you moving in now or something? I thought I'd spend the night if that's <laughs> all right. Are you kidding? Well, I'll just leave then, I guess. Jesus. Eddie, wait. Actually seen you with her. 
cuts me. Cuts me so deep, I'll never get over it. Can't get rid of this picture either. It just comes uninvited. And I like a little torture. I blame you more for this little torture than I do for what you did. Yeah. I'll go. You better. I better. What is that? You just better. A minute ago, you better beg and make a sight. Well, I got somebody coming to get me. Not right here? Yeah, here. Where else? She can see somebody. When was the last time we were together, Eddie, huh? Can you remember that far back? Who have you been seeing? Don't you touch me. Don't you How long have you been seeing him? him? I better wait for him to come. Yeah. I better wait right here. And as soon as he shows up, I better, I better go straight on over to him and give him a drink. Don't you think? You got a couple of glasses, my? In the bathroom. In the medicine cabinet. What <laughs> are glasses doing in the medicine cabinet? There's no germs in the medicine cabinet. Oh. Not aware of that fact. Learn something every day. <sighs> well, screw the glasses, then I have an electrum. Oh, lack of tracks lie. <laughs> Hey, you want some of this? Hmm? I'm on the wagon. Oh, good for you. About time. Eddie, this is a very friendly person who's coming over here. He's not malicious in any way. Eddie? Eddie, did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? About what? About the man who's coming over here. What man? Oh, <laughs> For starters, it can't be that serious, can it now? Oh, really? And why is that? Because you call him a man. What am I supposed to call him? I don't know. A guy or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A guy. If you call him a guy, then I would be worried, mate. But you call him a man, you give yourself away. Yeah, yeah, you're in a real dumb situation by calling this guy a man, because see, then you put yourself below him. <laughs> what in the hell do you know about it? I know he's a twerp. I know he's got to be a punk chump in a, a $2 suit or something, something like that. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't half kill themselves falling off horses or jumping on steers is a twerp in your book. Uh, yeah, that's right, because if you ain't a cowboy, you ain't shit. What are you supposed to be, Eddie? Uh, guy or a man? <laughs> I'll tell you what. We just wait for him to come. Two of us. You and me. Sit here and wait. And when he does, you be the judge. Why is everything a big contest with you? He's not competing with you. He doesn't even know you exist. You can introduce me. I, I am not introducing you. <laughs> I'm definitely not introducing you. He'd be very embarrassed to find me here with somebody else. Besides, I've only just met him. Embarrassed? Yeah, embarrassed. He's a very gentle person. Yeah. So happens. I'm a very gentle person in my own self. May. My feelings get easily damaged. What feelings? Can't keep messing me around like this, Eddie. It's been going on too long. I can't take it anymore. I get sick every time you come around. Then I get sick when you leave. You're like a disease to me. Besides, you got no right being jealous of me after all the bullshit I've been through with you. We've got a pact. Oh, God. Yeah, we made a pact. There is nothing between us now. Then what are you so excited about? I'm not you're beside yourself! Oh, you're driving me crazy! You're driving me totally crazy! We're connected, mate. 
you know we're connected. That was the setting. Hello, a long time ago. No, nothing was decided. You made all that up. Oh, uh, you know what happened. You promised me that was finished. You can't start that up all over again. You promised me. Yeah, but a promise can't stop something like that, baby. It happened, all right? No, nothing happened. Nothing ever happened. Innocent to the last drop. I want you to leave. Now. I can leave. Or I can stay. But you're going to find out one way or the other. I want you to leave. You didn't want me to leave before. I want you to leave now. It's not because of this man. It's just... What? It's stupid. You ought to know that by now. You think so, huh? It'll be the same thing over and over again. We'll be together for a little while, and then you'll be gone. I'll be gone? You will. You know it. You're just here now because I'm seeing somebody else. As soon as that's over, you'll be gone again. Hey, I didn't come here because you're seeing somebody. I, I didn't even know you were until you told me just now. Besides, I don't care who you're seeing. You will never replace me. Get out of here! Decided to jump off that wagon, huh? Thought you were leaving. Did you say you were leaving? Well, yeah, I was gone, huh? but then it suddenly occurred to me there probably isn't any man coming over here at all. There probably isn't any man or any guy or any fella or anybody. You just made all that up, didn't you? Why would I do that? Get even. Is that it? Just like old times. <laughs> old times. Yeah, well, I've been, um, I've been real good, Mike. No, I have. I, uh, I had no hooch for a long time. I no, no slammer time. I had no women. I've been a pretty boring kind of a guy, to tell you the truth. It's been a long time since I dropped the reins. So I figure I'm entitled once a once. Hmm? Why are you doing this? Because I'm thirsty. I don't mean that. Well, say what you mean then, baby. Why are you going through this whole thing again like you're trying to impress me or something? Like we just met? This is the same kind of crap you laid on me in high school. <laughs> well, it's just a little testimony of my love, see, baby, because if I was ever to stop trying to impress you, whoo, really, that would mean it was all over when I is all over. I don't know, Mike. From where I'm sitting, it kind of looks to me like you're trying to impress me back. <laughs> you know me inside now. I got nothing new to show you. No, 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 that's not so. You got this guy. This new guy. That's very impressive. I thought I should be all hung up to drive on him. Oh, thanks a lot. What is he, a uh, younger man or something? <laughs> it's none of your damn business. Have you called him yet? Have you? 
I'm just curious. Oh, wait. Oh. You don't have to tell me. I already know. <laughs> just like a little kid, you know that? A jealous little snot-nosed kid. Where y'all going on our sweet little day? To the movies. Oh, no. No one is going to the movies. There is not a movie in this state can hold a candle to our story. I must have heard that line a thousand times. You're repeating yourself, Eddie. No. I never repeat myself. Never repeat myself. You do nothing but repeat yourself. You just go round and round in a big circle. Well, I hope he does come through that door. I would very much like to see that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? yeah? What are you going to do? <laughs> Do anything, Mike. Just gonna nail his ass to the floor directly. That's all. I'm not sticking around. For Wait, where are you going? Where are you going? Take your hands. Okay, okay, I'll back up. I'll step back. It's all right. Okay, I'll be good. No, I just want to meet him. Is all. When I meet him, sit down, introduce us. We talk a little bit, and I'll be real nice. I'll be as gentle as a little old pussycat. You can introduce me as your brother. Maybe not your brother. Maybe not. Cousin. Yeah, I'll be your cousin. Okay. Introduce us, sit down, nice little talk. I will get up and leave, I promise. Why do you want to meet him? He's just a friend. See where you stand these days. You know, you can tell a lot about a person from the, the company they keep. Huh? Look, Eddie, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go across the street to that payphone. I'm going to call him up, tell him to forget about the whole thing, all right? Okay, good. And when you're outside, I will uh, back up your stuff. I am not going with you, Eddie. Headlights. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Here he comes. Why don't you run on out there, honey, and throw yourself into his arms or something real, real romantic. Like that. Oh. Where the hell did I put it? There we go. Yeah, I'd like to see you run out there and, and let him court you, I believe is the word. <laughs> court. What are you doing? I'm just putting my hooks on, baby. I want to look good for this man. Make the right impression. Because after all, I'm your cousin. You hurt him, Eddie. Oh, God. Get a hurt him. I'm a very sweet, sensible, sensitive, civilized sort. <laughs> it's just a date, you know, just an ordinary date. Yeah. Well, I'm going to turn him into a fig. <laughs> you see what I do next? This day. This yeah, Eddie, do me a favor. Just this once, all right? <laughs> Anything you want, baby. Anything in the whole wide world that you want. It's my command. Your wish. It's <laughs> a fig. <laughs> <clears throat> what is she doing over there? <coughs> May. It's not him. That? No, it's not. No, who is it then? Somebody else. It's always going to be somebody else. It's never going to be him because there is no him. You were just trying to make him jealous, but you know what? I know you've been living alone. No, it's a big, huge, extra long black Mercedes Benz. <sighs> This being a motel, people can park in the lot if they stay here. People who stay here don't drive a big, huge, extra long black Mercedes Benz. You don't. Someone else might. This is not a black Mercedes Benz type of motel, Eddie. Yeah, well, then close the damn curtain and get your sweet stuff over here, huh? Somebody is sitting out there in that car looking straight at me. What are they doing? It's not a they. It's a she. What's she doing? Just sitting there, staring at me. Get away from the window. You don't know anyone with a black Mercedes Benz by any chance, do you? Get away from the window. Jesus, she's got a gun! Oh, Christ! Eddie, who is that? Who the hell is out there? How should I know? Get down on the floor. Get down. 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 Get down.
did. She you told her where you were going. Oh, she followed you. I didn't know where I was going. Come on, how could I tell anyone? I didn't know oh. it was going until I got here. Shh, you're gonna pay for this, I swear to God, you're gonna pay. Shh, shh, shh. What do you think she's doing? Oh, how should I know that? Don't pretend like you don't know her. That's the kind of car a countess drives. Oh. That's exactly the kind of car I always pictured her in. Stay put. I'm not gonna lay here on my back with you on top of me and get shot by some dumb rich twat. Now, let me up and in. Wait, you hear that? Yeah, maybe. Hey, stay down. Oh, down? Yeah, stay down. Crazy is this chick anyway. <laughs> I'm sure she's pretty crazy, huh? Have you balled her yet? It's funny. Stay down. Oh, sh she blew the windshield clean out of my truck. God damn it. Eddie. What? Is she gone? Huh? Oh, uh. Yeah, maybe. I don't see no headlights. My truck. My truck. I can't believe it. Yeah. She saw the consequences before you got in her pants. Mm -hmm. Seems to run in the family. Family. She's talking about my old man. See, he fell in love twice, is basically how it happened. Later, much later, years later, after I found out, he told me, it's the same love, boy, it just got split in two. All right, there he said, Dad. My mom, she, she might have figured that something was going on at the time, but if she did, she didn't let on to me. Now, maybe she was afraid to find out. Or maybe she just loved him too much to make a stink. I really don't know. He disappeared for months at a time. Not once did she ask him where he went. She was always glad to see him when he came back. <laughs> and two of us would go running out of the house to meet him as soon as we saw the Studebaker pulling across the field. Well, this went on for years. He would disappear. Reappear! Hooray! disappear. Years and years. And then suddenly one day it stopped. I stayed home for a while. He never went outside. He just stayed in the house, sat in his chair and stared. Then he started to take these long walks. He would walk all day. And then he'd walk all night too, out across the field in the dark. I'd watch from the window as he just vanish into the black with his overcoat on. And I asked him once where he was going, and he turned back at the door and he said, boy, I am making a decision. Well, one night, when I was 15, just going into high school, I asked him if I could go with, and he took me. So then the two of us walked together out across the field in the dark. I remember the field had just been plowed, and our feet sank down into the powder. Drew came up over the tops of my shoes and waved me down, and I, I wanted to stop and shake my shoes out. He didn't stop. Just kept going forward, and I did not want to lose him in the dark, so I, I just kept up as best I could. And we were completely silent. We didn't say a word to each other the whole time. I remember these, these white owls came swooping down out of nowhere, hunting for jackrabbits, just diving past our heads and then disappearing. And we could barely see a foot in front of us, it was so dark, but we just kept walking silent like that for miles, heading for town. And then I could see the drive-in movie, way off in the distance, just square patches of light shifting. And then vague faces began to appear. And as we got closer, I could recognize one of those faces. It was Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy moving his mouth, speaking without words, speaking to a, a woman in a red dress. Hmm. Well, 
When we got to town, we had it straight for the liquor store, of course. Old man made me wait in the parking lot while he went in to get his bottle. And I remember there in the lot, there were all these Mexican migrant workers standing around next to a pickup with mud all over the tires. And they were drinking beers and laughing. And I felt jealous of them. I, I didn't know why. And I could see the old man through the glass door in the liquor store paying for his bottle. I felt sorry for him. I didn't know why. But he came outside with the bottle all wrapped up in a brown paper sack. The second he came out, those Mexican men, they stopped laughing. They stopped talking. They stopped drinking. They just stared at us as we turned and walked away. Now we walked right through the center of town, past the donut shop, past the miniature golf course, past the Chevron station, and it was there that he opened that bottle up and he, he gave it to me. He didn't even take a drink himself. He, he just offered it to me first. So I drank it and handed it back to him and he drank it and we just kept walking through town like that, handing the bottle back and forth between us as we went until we drank it dry. And we didn't say one word the whole time. Well, finally we got to this a little white house with a red awning on the far side of town. And I'll never forget that awning because it flapped in the night breeze and the porch light made it glow. It was a hot desert breeze. Air smelled like new cut alfalfa. When I followed the old man up onto the porch, he rang the bell. I was getting scared then because I, I didn't know we were going to visit anybody. I, I thought we were just there for a walk. And then this woman comes to the door, this beautiful woman with red hair, and she throws herself into the old man's arms. And the old man, he starts to cry. He just breaks down right in front of me. And she's kissing him all over the face and clinging to him real tight. And the old man, he, he just keeps wailing away. Then, through that doorway, behind them both, I seen this girl. This girl. She just appeared. She's just standing there staring at me. I was just standing there staring back. We, we couldn't take our eyes off each other. It was like we knew each other from somewhere. We just didn't know where. And we sure as hell didn't know the old man was both of our... No, we didn't know them. Not yet. Not for a while. Not till after we... No, we didn't know. One thing we did know. The moment we sent each other that very instant, we both of us knew that we would never, ever stop being in love. Desperately. Desperately in love with the old man my mother was. You could tell that right away. You could see it in her eyes. She was obsessed to the point where she couldn't stand being without him for even a second. She kept hunting for him from town to town, following little clues he left behind, like a postcard maybe, or a motel on the back of a matchbook. He never left a phone number or address or anything as simple as that because my mother was his secret, see. She hounded him for years and he kept trying to keep her at a distance because the closer these two separate lives drew together, these two separate women, these two separate kids, the more nervous he got. The more filled with terror that these two lives would find out about each other and devour him whole. That his secret would take him by the throat. Finally, she caught up with him. Just by a process of elimination, she dogged him down. I remember the day we discovered the town. She was on fire. 
this is it, she kept saying, this is the place. And her whole body was trembling as we walked through the streets looking for the house where he lived. And she kept squeezing my hand to the point I thought she'd crush the bones in my fingers. She was terrified she'd come across him by accident on the street because she knew she was trespassing. She knew she had crossed into this forbidden zone, but she couldn't help herself. She walked all day through that stupid hick town, all day long. We went through every neighborhood, peering through every open window, looking in at every dumb family, until finally found them. It was just exactly supper time, and they were all sitting down at the table, and they were having fried chicken. That's how close we were to the window, we could see what they were eating. And we could hear voices, but we couldn't quite make out what they were saying. Eddie and his mother were talking, but the old man never said a word. Just sat there, eating his chicken in silence. Funny thing was, almost as soon as we found him, he disappeared. She was only with him about two weeks before he just vanished. Nobody saw him after that, ever. And my mother, she, she just turned herself inside out. And I couldn't understand that. I kept watching her grieve as though somebody died. She'd pull herself up into a ball and just stare at the floor. And I couldn't understand that because I was feeling the exact opposite feeling. I was in love, see? I come home after school, after being with Eddie, and, and I was filled with this joy. And there she'd be standing in the middle of the kitchen, staring at the sink. Her eyes look like a funeral. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't even feel sorry for her. All I could think about was him. And all he could think about was me. We couldn't take a breath without thinking of each other. We couldn't eat if we weren't together. We couldn't sleep. At night, we'd get sick if we were apart, violently sick. My mother even took me to see a doctor, and Eddie's mother took him to see the same doctor, and the doctor couldn't figure out what was wrong with us. Just thought we had the flu or something. Eddie's mother didn't know what was wrong with him, but my mother, she knew exactly what was wrong. She knew it cleared down to her bones. She recognized every symptom. And she begged me not to see him, but I wouldn't listen. And then she begged Eddie not to see me, but Eddie, he wouldn't listen. This, my, that whole business, man. Must run in the family. That ain't right. In fact, that's a load of crap, and you know it. I am nothing like our. Nothing like him. Old man. Nothing ever got split in two. Amen. In my whole life, I only ever loved one woman. Yeah? Yeah. What about her? Oh, hell. She tasted me, not the other way around. Honey, I was just. I was killing time till you came to your senses, okay? I thought you said he didn't know her. <laughs> yeah. I know we're well enough to tell you that she's coming back here. He's definitely going to come back. we got to get out of here now. We? Yeah, uh, pack your stuff. We're getting out. I am not going with you, Eddie. This is your mess, not mine. I came here to get you. What's the matter with you? I came all this way just to get you. You think I would do that if I, if I didn't love you? Bitch, she, she didn't mean anything to me. Nothing. I got no reason to be here but you. Like I said, May, we're connected. We always have and we always will be. Eddie. It's true. You know it's true. Yeah. I know it is, Eddie. But I'm not going with you. Not this time. Yeah. 
I'm not me. Not without you. I don't care what you think anymore. I care what you feel. I'm not leaving. I'm staying right here. <laughs> I don't care how many dates come waltzing through that door. I will take on every one of them. And I don't care if you hate my guts. I don't care if you can't stand the sight of me or the sound of me or the smell of me. I don't care. You will never get rid of me. I will track you down no matter where you go. I've been right about it every, every single time. Every single time. I know exactly how that mind works, baby. I've been right every time. You gotta give this up, baby. Not give up. Look, I don't understand what you got in your head anymore. I really don't. I don't get it. Now you desperately need me. Now you can't live without me. Now you'll do anything for me? Why should I believe it this time? Honey, because it's true. It was supposed to have been true every time before. Every other time. Now it's true again? God, you have been jerking me off like this for 15 years. Fifteen years I've been a yo-yo for you. I've gone up and down and up and down and up. <gasps> and down. Lots of down. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. Say, so, yeah, I'm right here. I'm not going. I don't know why you won't just look at me. You know it's me. Who else do you think it is? You want some water? Just keep sitting here like this. You want me to go outside and get you something? Some, I don't know, potato chips or something? Not gonna leave. Don't worry. Not gonna leave. I already told you that. Staying right here. You ain't going nowhere. from Shepherd to Shakespeare and in between. Uh, best actress with whom I've ever performed. True. Aww. Presented by Paul McGuffins. Yeah. Thank you. And then it lists all the things we've done. So, I mean, you call her, you call her swan song this night. So, hang on to this memory. I mean, because this is something special that you, you just seen her give you. Yeah. Um, thank you all so much for coming. Every penny goes to Les Turner ALS, all, all proceeds, not all profits.
<clears throat> to them. Um, I really don't have much else to say. Do you have something to say? Thank you for putting this on. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big show with a lot of apps. And right. Oh, sincere thanks from cast and musicians to all of you. This is kind of a nasty night. And you guys, um, you know, you came out for this and for Sam and for ALS and for uh, a wonderful, wonderful script that I hope we've, we've done some justice to. Bless you all. Stay well. Take care of each other. Thanks. Yeah.